Hello and welcome to another Popper video. Today we are discussing the trophies. Trophy Tuesday from Magic Online. We are going to be looking at all of the decks that made a trophy this week in the last seven days and describing what is performing the best, what the winner's metagame looks like, and checking out some spice. Before we do anything else like dive into the day to day, let's look at the top performing archetypes. Uh, we've got 23 trophies uh, from Mono Red. That is a lot, 18% of the metagame. Blue Black Fairies mostly for 13 trophies. Black Green Gardens for 13 trophies. 13 distinct Glitter Affinity decks that are ranging from Jeskai Affinity to Black White Affinity to Blue White Affinity, even Blue White Affinity Splashing Galvanic Blast. These are almost all Jeskai Affinity. But any deck that was playing Glitters and Mirror Enforcer, I think, fits into this specific MetaShare um, wedge. The next one is Call Gates at 11, so 8% of the metagame. Then we've got Blue Red Terror, Familiars, Jeskai Ephemerate, White Weenie. It kind of trails off from there. A bunch of one-ofs. But we're seeing that the most powerful things to be doing are playing Mono Red, playing Glitters, uh, Golgari Control. Fairies is really good. So you got a couple different blue decks here with Cogate, Terror, Fairies, and Familiars, but a huge chunk of really successful Mono Red. And these decks were very interesting because there's a lot of different variation to these two. So let's go ahead and check out the day today and uh, see some pretty cool decks. All right, day one was January 16th. We have 15 distinct decks that were uh, succeeding. Interesting to see is Bruxow had two trophies, which is really impressive. And then we've got a bunch of mono red, one, two, three. But Carves is playing his own interesting version where he's got Sawblade Scamp. It says whenever you cast non-creature spell, put an oil counter on Sawblade Scamp, and then you can remove an oil counter to ping uh, each opponent. So it's sort of like a pinger aggro Koldotha deck, also playing four Reckless Impulse. I thought that was pretty cool. And then... We also have um, of note Kid Renan here. They're playing Jeskai, but it's actually blue white affinity splashing for Galvanic Blast specifically. That's kind of interesting. There wasn't el anything else that was super spicy. We had a interest, uh, regular Familiars deck playing Seagate Oracle, Murming Mystic, Meeting of Minds. This is more along the lines of what Adepto Terra is playing with Merchant Scroll, stuff like that. Moving on to day two, we've got Kid Renin with two more trophies with the same deck. So in two days, he rattled off three trophies with the same deck. Very impressive. We've got 20 total trophies on this day. Two different versions of Jeskai uh, Affinity with Thoughtcast. So this was the blue-white splashing red. And we've got uh, Thoughtcast version with Galvanic Blast playing Thraven Inspector and Ornithopter. And we've got another one. This is more the Walker 735 with Ardent Recruit and playing two different copies of Reckless Impulse and Thoughtcast. So this one is a bit more mid-range. This one's a bit more all-in. Both are very successful, it looks like. One notable deck here is the Blue Black Terror by Baby Shark. They're not playing Murmuring Mystic whatsoever, and instead they're opting to go for seven of the blue creatures, four Terror, three Serpent, and uh, that makes them a little bit less all-in versus Graveyard because the Gurmag Anglers eat some of their Graveyard. They can just shove stuff in the Graveyard and go for it. We've got um, Emo Goblin here on the Mono Red Turbo Emblem deck which was done by Rubens Nito, but this specific list is a, uh, a net deck of the one that I created because of Sans Snow Covered Mountain. But this deck aims to slam Simeon Spirit Guide or Namestaker Goblin early and then put Crimson Fleet Commodore for Monarch or Trailblazer's Torch for initiative right on the table on turn two and then attack everybody with your Goblin Bushwhacker. You have like kind of a Bushwhacker, Tomb Raider, and Koldotha Rebirth plan, as well as a bunch of removal spells. We have an interesting Familiars deck here from Otorok, who has decided to not play Preordain whatsoever and instead opting for four Brainstorm with some Murmuring Mystic, Seagate Oracle, and Meeting of Minds as well. So people seem to be having success with the Meeting of the Minds version. 
that's pretty much everything else is stock here on day two. Day three, the 18th, we have, oh, I should. Okay, so day one, we had three mono red, three blue black fairies, one Golgari, one Glitter's Affinity, three Cogates, Terror Familiars, and two Jeskai Ephemerates. On day two, we had one mono red, five crazy amount of uh, blue black fairies, but five blue black fairies, four Glitter's Affinity decks, and then we've got two of Familiars and Mono Blue Terror. One of of Cogate, Terror, Demir Terror, no, Cogate is a Terror, Demir Terror, our Black White Blade deck, and then the Mono Red Turbo Emblem that I showed, and uh, Demir Control. Demir Control being a control deck just leaning on Murmuring Mystic, Thorn of the Black Rose, and Polarian Terror as your closing endgame. All right, let's move to day three. Day three, the most successful deck was Cogates at three copies. Then we have two white weenies here, which is kind of cool to see. Haven't seen multiple white weenies in a while. We have an Orzov Blade deck, and then a couple of other randoms. We have two Jeskai uh, Affinities, both of them playing the Thraben Inspector. And one pretty cool notable here is from Saitama who is playing the Judge's Familiar over Spell Pierce. This is a recent downshift. So Judge's Familiar says counter sacrifice, counter target instant or sorcery, unless his controller pays one. So he's decided to use that as another threat, as well as the Spell Pierce type effect in the deck. Said it was pretty good um, overall, but we might have to check that out. Let me know if you want to see that deck on video. All right. On the 19th here, we have a very large amount of decks, 25 individual decks, four of which are mono red. And Carves here has a double 5-0 with two different Pinger Burn versions. It's kind of interesting to see his, um, I guess, progression here. We've got one Firebrand Archer and uh, four Kessig Flame Breathers with six Reckless Impulse effects, uh, a bunch of card draw cantrips, Lava Dart, pretty cool. And then if you move down to the next one, he has seven pinger effects. Burning Tree Emissary is a free spell. Goblin Tomb Raider, which is your goblin guide, definitely necessary. And um, he's actually cut down to just five impulse effects. I think it's the same amount of, very similar amount of uh, burn spells in the deck. That's something I'm also interested in. And if you're interested in a uh, pinger burn, you might want to check out these carved lists. We also have a... Rakdos Madness that popped up. Haven't seen that in a while, but this is a deck that's using discard effects to Madness out uh, Alms of the Vein, Fiery Temper, and Kitchen Imp for uh, very value-oriented mid-rangey burn. This one also has a lot of life gain, so it can be good against burn decks in the mirror. We have a couple of Is It Terror 5-0s, and one notable is that Andre Mangucci came in, popped out of 5-0 with what he was calling Is It Scred? It's the blue-red terror control deck. And then Luis0211. This person is using the burn deck that I have been championing, which is using Namesticker Goblin to power out fast early turns uh, com combined with Lotus Petal. And then we have eight of the Reckless Impulse effects for redraw. So you're really playing 12 draw twos and just powering through your opponent really fast. They're playing a slightly different sideboard, choosing to use Seal of Fire here um, as additional ways to disrupt either Namestick or Goblin in the mirror, or also to disrupt the uh, Jeskai Affinity players, trying to keep their tutus from getting suited up. One really cool thing at the bottom, um, USP Dudes. This guy, he is a old school player who is just always innovating, and I really like this deck. It is... Boral Synthesizer with eight creatures and then three Quark Clan Shamans. I'm not sure if the Quark Clan Shamans are really that necessary to play that many of them, but it's kind of sweet. We have um, a ton of food in this deck. So this is really like an anti-burn deck, it looks like, keeping the Shamans for sweepers on the ground. Four Galblast, four Bolt, two Destroy Helix. So you have a ton of burn spells that can go face but you also have a ton of food with four Candy Trail, four Lembus, and then also four Icar Wellspring. And then Quark Clan Shaman can sacrifice the Wellspring or the Synthesizer for extra value. And Synthesizer can also be another threat if you sacrifice it and create a Samurai. 
I really like this deck. I'm interested in checking it out. We also have makeshift munitions to close the game and have more pinging. Also sacrificing your extra stuff. Lembus is sweet. That was the 19th. On the 20th, we have four mono red decks. Two blue fey, two Golgari control, and a bunch of one ofs. Glitters, Cogates, Demir Terror, Elves. And then what's cool is we marked this as freed combo and walls, but Apis 72 likes to play tap on tap stuff. And walls, you know, that has tap on tap with Axebane Guardian and your Galvanic Alchemist or freed from the real. But he also has created this like hyper all in speedy tap on tap using Arbor Elf and Rhyme Tender. Then combined with Freed from the Real, untapping a forest that's covered with a wild growth or in a Utopia Sprawl, so that you can just make infinite mana that way and then kill your opponent with Stream of Thought, which is pretty sweet. And he was saying that this deck is specifically um, really good because you're pay playing four Tamiyo's Safekeeping and that this is just a super powerhouse in the deck, keeping your creatures alive. We also had a Mono Blue Fey and a Boros Ephemerate. If you haven't seen, Boros Ephemerate is a kind of a mid-range deck that's a, trying to use Ephemerate. Four Ephemerates, a bunch of creatures that ETB draw a card and gain life. And then you have Stonehorn Dignitary, Ardent Elementalist, which is the red Archaeomancer essentially. So you can loop Ephemerates. And then it looks like they're not actually playing the initiative here, which is a surprise. Uh, classically, this is a deck that's playing initiative, but they're, wow. They're actually using Boros Ephemerate style, but also mixed with uh, the Gates deck. So they've got four Sacred Cat. This is really sweet. Sort of a Boros Gates Ephemerate Stonehorn. <laughs> this deck is all over the place. Pretty cool. Wow. Bunch of strands. Definitely something that's in I'd be interested in checking out. Let me know if you are want to see that on camera. <laughs> I also, let's see, go to the next day, the 21st. On the 21st, we have three mono reds, two glitters affinity, and the rest are just a bunch of one ofs with 16 total. Sorceress Queen had, let's see. Oh, let's go back to the 21st. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit all over the place this morning, but we actually have three different copies of the synthesizer list that I played, including me piloting, but it seems like this is a very powerful deck if you got three different people trophying with it, including me. <laughs> Pretty sick. So I definitely would recommend that you try this out. It's really high power level. And people like to say that name sticker goblin or underscore goblin is not very effective in paper because you're not getting as much mana off of it but really in this deck you're looking to cast one or two of the goblins and then just smash in so it's not really that big of a deal if your second and third one don't make that much mana you're just trying to overpower your opponent really quickly and a free spell that's a 2-2 is part of that okay um, one other notable here is Turbo Fog. Was not on this day. On the previous day, we had Turbo Fog from Ritual Sinkhole, who actually won the challenge on Sunday this week of with Turbo Fog. So he seems to be on quite a roll. And on the 21st here, we've got another 5-0 from Ritual Sinkhole and Turbo Fog. That's really impressive. We have all the Mono Reds, Glitter's Affinity. One cool mono red here is from Sorceress Queen, who is playing basically a goblin's token strategy. They're playing Mog Raider, sacrifice a goblin, target creature gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. This is really useful for attacking through lifelinkers, and they're playing Krenko's Command to make extra goblins. A couple of Reckless Impulse. I'm, I'd be interested to know how they came up with their draw spell package here, but it's pretty cool. This is more of a goblin's focused deck. Let's see. We also have Mono Red Shron here. This is actually taking in the two Lembus and two Firebolt strategy that I came up with for my video. So I'm happy to see that doing well. That's really sweet. We have a, a Boros Synth deck that's playing Boros Synth, pretty much your classic Boros Synthesizer, plus a, a couple of random all the glitters to just smash in. So this is a more aggro version of the regular Boros Synth. 
I love that they can just put all that glitters in it. And I didn't combine this all that glitters deck with the affinity all that glitters just because there's no affinity creatures. It's just, it's, hey, I have a random one of that kills you. <laughs> we have two mono black decks. And people really do like mono black, so let's highlight those. We've got True Name Nemesis, who um, used to play a lot of gardens, but is now on this mono black uh, Crypt Rats long end game deck. So they can loop their deck with Campfire to just time, like eventually win the game by you decking. We've got three ill-gotten inheritance in the main deck, which says whenever a... Oh, no. Ill-gotten inheritance is literally just drain you for one every turn. Wow. Very, very slow deck. So this, they got Tithing Blade, Crypt Rats, Troll. They can get back the Crypt Rats, maybe? They've decided not to get the Crypt Rats back with the... Um, blood fountain and they're instead trying to use campfire to recycle it looks like that's pretty cool we have also mono black burn by velor 98 playing the fun sacred or cauldron familiar the mono black cat crypt rats pretty standard mono black burn with a bit of a uh, food um kind of sub strategy and going to our last, going to our last uh, league posting of the week, closing it out with 20 decks. Uh, I happen to trophy twice. It makes me feel really good with both familiars and Eggstron. Eggstron, if you haven't seen, definitely check out the different videos on my channel. But this deck uses Foundry Inspector to cost reduce your artifacts and win the game with Jace's Erasure, which says whenever you draw a card, you can have target player put the top card of his or her library into his or her graveyard. So target player mills a card. So you just loop Conjurer's Bobble infinitely for the win. Really fun. Uh, we also had Aspiring Spike responding to my tweet saying he wanted to get into Popper. I'd love to see that. Let's do it. We have... <laughs> what the, the biggest notable here from this specific day was that Mono Red put up seven trophies on a single day. Crazy. We also have a uh, two other notables. First is Boros Bully, which hasn't been around very much. This is a pretty classic bully list using a bunch of things that have flashback and go wide uh, to win the game eventually with Rally the Peasants. And we have... Someone trying out more variations on the white black affinity blade deck. This one I did classify in the glitters variants because it's playing the Formir Enforcer for glitters as well as some Springleaf drums. But you can see that they opted for a little bit more removal with cast down and even more card draw with Fanatical Offering. So they actually have seven draw twos. And Fanatical Offering. <laughs> kind of synergizes in this deck because it leaves a artifact on the table for you can for you to use to power out your mirror enforcer as well as your all deck glitters. I really liked when I was playing this deck the ability for the blood fountain to just outgrind your opponent, keeping getting back your mirror enforcers and your value creatures. That was really sweet. So that is the leagues as of this last week. Today is the 23rd of January. Let me know what you thought was the coolest deck, something that you'd like to see on camera and I appreciate everybody for watching. Hopefully you got to see a couple sweet things and we'll see you in the next video.